Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion, US Canada Great Lakes turning acidic. Before we understand what this topic is in greater detail, a quick gentle reminder. Baiju's exam prep IAS is now on Telegram. If you have not yet joined the channel, please do join so that you get all the current affairs related updates. Let's get started and try and understand everything about this topic. There are extreme events that are taking place in and around the world. Why? That is because of the climate change. Climate change is creating a havoc. When we speak about climate change, there are multiple issues that it is surfacing. One is the wildfires in the forest. We also have the ocean warming as well. Similar such issue that we are currently witnessing is ocean acidification as well as freshwater acidification. So this article here is primarily speaking about the freshwater acidification which could harm the biodiversity in that particular area. So first we will understand what is this ocean acidification, then we will understand what is aquatic ecosystem acidification, what could be the harm that it is causing on the biodiversity and the ecosystem and what are the measures that we may have to take in the near future. First, what is this acidification of the ocean? Ocean acidification basically means our ocean absorbs excess CO2 when we burn fossil fuels from the power cars, create electricity and this CO2 increases acidity in our ocean on a global scale. So what exactly happens? We as humans are deeply connected to our ocean, whether we realize it or not. Our ocean regulates climate like the heart regulates the blood flow in our bodies. Humidity, rain, temperatures are all controlled by the the ocean. Burning of fossil fuel adds excess heat, carbon dioxide that disrupt this system making it hard to maintain a stable climate. So what exactly is this ocean acidification? Ocean acidification refers to the reduction in the pH of the oceanic water over an extended period of time. This is primarily because of the uptake of the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So when carbon dioxide is absorbed by the seawater, there are a series of chemical reactions that occur which basically increases the concentration of the hydrogen ions. So we have carbon dioxide plus H2O which basically increases the acidity. The ocean absorbs CO2 which mixes with water increases the acidity of the water. Scientists initially believed that this was good for the earth. Why? Because all the atmospheric carbon dioxide that is present in the atmosphere is taken by the ocean over a period of time they have realized that this is leading to lowering of the pH which makes the water bodies more acidic. So ocean acidification is where the pH of the water drops. This results in increasing acidic concentration in the oceanic water. Now if this is taken to other ecosystems that is when water ecosystems like lake, river, so on and so forth what it results in decrease of the pH and this ultimately means those freshwater ecosystems have also become acidic over a period of time. So what is oceanic acidification? Where the atmosphere has the carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide is taken by the oceans. pH drops and when pH drops there is increase of the acidity in the oceanic water. Similarly in the freshwater ecosystem what exactly happens? There are number of lakes, number of rivers. They also start absorbing the carbon dioxide that is present in the ecosystem and as a result the pH drops acidification increases and ultimately it is going to harm all these freshwater bodies. So the acidification of freshwater bodies take place when excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere gets rapidly absorbed into the system. When we look at data given by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration of the United States of America, when you compare what was the concentration of oceanic acidification 200 years prior and now, what we see is 30% increase in the acidity of the oceanic water. So over the years, what we have witnessed is the increased acidification 
of the oceanic water and at the same time this has also increased the acidification of the fresh waters as well. So over the years a handful of computer modeling studies have suggested that atmospheric carbon might turn the Great Lakes and other freshwater bodies more acidic as well. So far there haven't been any long term monitoring programs that are capable of detecting trends in the pH levels of the lake and now what they have is a new project called as the Lake Huron project which might change that. So when you look at the oceanic concentration we have had couple of projects but when it comes to the freshwater lakes as of now we also require a project which is able to measure the acidification in that particular lake. So what we have is the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes over a period of time have increased levels of acidity. In order to check it what we require is a project and that project is what is called as the Lake Huron project. Now the question is what are the Great Lakes? When we speak about Great Lakes these are the lakes where we see in United States of America and Canada. Which are these Great Lakes? What we have is Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Erie as well as Lake Ontario. So these lakes which are straddling along the US Canada border drain into the Gulf of St. Lawrence where in the North Atlantic through the Lawrence River. So these bodies happen to be the largest group of freshwater lakes in the entire world. So the US Canada border passes through Lake Superior, Huron, Erie and Ontario and Lake Michigan that we just discussed is completely in the United States of America and when you look into the data we have Lake Huron which happens to be the world's third largest freshwater lake. So Huron happens to be the third largest freshwater lake which are the first two please put it on the comment section. So in order to understand how much of acidification has impacted this particular system what they have come up with is a study. In order to conduct the study two sensors have been attached to a floating weather buoy at Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary near Alpena Michigan in the US one of the measures carbon dioxide pressure in the water column the other happens to measure the pH so basically the crew who are present in this particular area are also collecting water samples at various lengths as well and they are trying to understand what is the acidification level in these Great Lakes. So basically they will try to understand the chemical analysis of this particular area. So what are the consequences of acidification? So whenever we speak about acidification what it will create is a problem for the ecosystem as well as for the biodiversity. What what is the impact that it will have on the Great Lakes? The Great Lakes are believed to have been born 20,000 years ago when the earth started to warm and water from melting glaciers filled the basins on its surface according to NOA. Today the Great Lakes contain a fifth of the world's total fresh water and is a crucial source of irrigation and transportation. The Great Lakes also serve as the habitat for more than 3,500 species of plants and animals. However, this rich ecosphere is now under threat as the five lakes would witness a pH decline of 0.29 to 0.49 pH units meaning they would become more acidic by 2100 assuming the current projections of anthropogenic carbon dioxide and constant alkalinity. As of now the concentration is good but if it becomes more acidic over a period of time this can become an issue for the irrigation facilities. This can become an issue for all these species like the plants and animals which have made these lakes as their natural habitat. So this basically means that it is going to harm all the species that are present in this particular area. When we speak about the ocean acidification, we also have the shellfish and the skeletal species which are immediately affected. This ultimately harms the food webs and the ecosystems as well. So what are the larger impact or the consequences? When we look at the larger impact, certain fish ability to detect predators is decreased in more acidic waters. When these organisms are at risk, the entire food web may also be at risk. Macro invertebrates and large vertebrates alike are particularly sensitive to acidification. These species exhibit higher mortality, 
lower reproductive rate under acidified conditions embryonic development therefore species success is also compromised in acidified fresh waters conversely algae become far more successful in acidified environments and may quickly dominate these habitats out competing other species as well these are some of the impact that is going to haunt the great lakes as well as other oceanic acidification water in 2018 study of four german reservoirs aquatic researchers at drew university found that their ph levels had declined three times faster in 35 years than in oceans since the industrial revolution as a result of the increase in the acidity the ability of the water fleas the water fleas were not able to defend themselves against predators was compromised scientists fear that a similar trend might be seen in great lakes as well says one of the report another study published in 2021 which looked into the consequences of acidification of freshwater bodies was carried out in taiwan where scientists experimented with chinese mitten crabs it was found that once the water acidity reaches the projected 2100 levels it would more than triple the mortality rates of these crabs as well this is how it is going to hit all the biodiversity that have been existing in the system so what is that we have to do scientists have said what we require is the global effort to reduce the concentrated atmospheric carbon dioxide and at the same time as much as possible we have to prevent the acidification of the freshwater ecosystem so what can we do we can reduce the use of fertilizers that have high nitrogen and phosphorus concentration we can actually reduce energy use by choosing energy efficient appliances we can also minimize the use of fossil fuel based vehicles so some of the measures if we are able to do it we would be reducing the acidification is what is this article all about it is this that we have to understand with respect to this article this is it for today thank you for watching all the best